Welcome to Expert Talks. I'm Agathe Ducar. Today I'm with Cal Scheiber, who will be sharing with us strategies on how to improve process safety management in your company and what the future looks like for these programs. If you have any questions, please leave us a comment. Kyle, thank you for joining us. Hey, yeah, hello, thanks for having me. So Kyle, you're an expert in PSM and you spend the majority of your time with Fortune 500 companies looking to improve their process. Could you maybe start by giving us an overview of the main regulation around the world and how they're related to process safety? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so since I'm in the US and I'm most commonly interacting with United States process safety professionals, uh, the regulation that I see most often is the US OSHA process safety management framework. Uh, that's been around since 1992 and it requires that regulated facilities implement a a process safety framework that incorporates 14 elements that are outlined by that regulation. Uh, there are other regulations around the world uh, that have a similar aim of uh, reducing or minimizing the number of process safety incidents. Uh, we see a lot of those too because so many of our customers have global operations. Uh, so for example, there's the Seveso directive in the EU uh, that kind of tells all the EU member states uh, how to create a regulation for process safety. Uh, example of that would be COMA in the UK. Uh, there's a national standard in Canada for process safety management, and that is uh, CSA Z767. Uh, China has developed their own uh, process safety standard that's largely based on the US regulation. Um, and then India has their own as well, and that is uh, the MSIHC rules. Uh, so no matter where you are, uh, there is going to be a regulation that uh, aims to uh, identify how to safely operate a, a process that involves hazardous chemicals. Well, that's indeed a lot of uh, acronyms. And, and when people think about process safety management, they think mainly about compliance with a regulation like OSHA's PSM standard. But PSM is much more than just compliance. Would you agree? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, so keeping everyone safe is obviously always priority number one. Uh, whenever I talk with process safety professionals, uh, there's a lot of pride and satisfaction in doing that job well and keeping people and the company safe. Uh, proven compliance, you know, proving that you're doing what you should be doing is next in line. Uh, but what we're seeing with customers with mature process safety frameworks in place uh, is that they are able to actually measure and monitor and improve their processes uh, and get better over time. Um, so this doesn't even, this not only makes their processes safer, uh, but over time these companies are actually able to be more productive, uh, more efficient, um, and they're able to do things like enact changes faster. Uh, they're faster at turning around equipment repairs and training new staff, um, reacting to business disruptions like uh, weather or supply chain problems. Um, and that's because they have these procedures and safety programs in place uh, where it's clear what needs to be done, who needs to do it, and the steps that need to be taken in order. That sounds all very promising. Um, so what are the strategies you see companies adopting to improve PSM program today? Can you share any results? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the large companies that we see uh, want to be able to adopt these routines and behaviors and programs uh, rules all throughout their, their operations worldwide. Uh, so it's important that there is a, a system in place where all this organizational data sits and exists. Uh, so that's data like audit and inspection results, it's management of change processes, it's risk and hazard analyses, uh, and so on. So all the different elements of the process safety management framework should be in one place. Um, and what that really allows is this standardization to take place across the entire organization. Once you have all the data that can be compared against each other in one place, uh, you're really able to start taking those next steps and make sure everyone's doing the same thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, do you have any example? I thought you might ask, and I actually did come prepared with an example. Um, so I know of one customer who's using our management of change solution pretty extensively. Uh, they actually have over a hundred different types of changes that they are uh, managing that they've identified. Uh, so that's everything from like equipment repairs uh, to organizational changes, 
uh, document updates uh, to things like uh, changing out like a critical alarm at one of their processes. Um, so for each one of these different types of changes, they've, out, they've uh, identified the teams that should be in charge of each step, uh, the checklists that those people need to complete, uh, and the workflow that needs to be followed. Uh, and so these are all set up globally so that uh, at each of their facilities, those changes are implemented in the same way. Um, and they've actually in, implemented uh, and followed 10,000 changes uh, using Enable on this way. Uh, so they've also been doing that to standardize their inspections and audits in the same way. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Um, now, given your experience, how do you see the evolution of PSM? Uh, what is the next frontier in use of technology to further improve PSM? Yeah, uh, so once companies have all of this data in one place, the next logical step is to start comparing all of this data against each other. Uh, that way you can actually start maximizing performance. Um, so we're seeing some of that already from our users. Uh, they're able to start asking questions and start getting answers to those questions using the data that's in Enablon. And so those are questions like, uh, which of my sites are having difficulty adhering to these processes that we've outlined? Uh, which of my sites are always behind on inspections or audits? Um, and so on. And so once you start asking those questions and getting those answers with data, you're able to actually start focusing on the sites or the processes that you know are struggling. Um, beyond that, uh, because you're able to consolidate all of your process safety risks in one place, uh, you're able to identify the biggest risks uh, or maybe the risks that are most easily mitigated, and you're able to start tackling that risk to minimize risk in a really systemic and prioritized way. Um, as for future use of technology, uh, I'm looking forward to a future where we're able to identify an increase in process safety risk in real time based on the activities and data that we have in Enablon. Uh, so for example, maybe I know that I have a temporary change in place uh, occurring in a pipeline, and I know that I have hot work scheduled for that same area of the facility. Is that a risk or not? And I think with the data that we have in Enablon, with uh, the information that we have, we can start to identify and answer that question in real time. And if there is an increase in risk that we've identified, uh, we can alert those the people on site and uh, stop that work from proceeding. Um, and that's a, that's a huge potential project. Uh, and to do that effectively, you're going to need to start bringing in uh, big data. Uh, you're going to need a huge data set. Uh, start bringing in machine learning, uh, like predictive analytics, uh, bringing, all, bringing together all these tools to, to start really solving this problem. Um, I think that's a fascinating problem. It's going to be really difficult and challenging, but I'm looking forward to tackling it over the next few years. Amazing. Well, thank you, Kyle. Thank you so much for sharing strategy to improve PSM programs. And thank you all for watching Expert Talks. Look out for more videos, including more insights on safety topics.